Uh, crap, lost my place. Ah, Haley Mazor, and a, uh, again, future apologies if I mispronounce your name. Do you play any... She asks, do you play any musical instruments? I do. Well, I did. Uh, I used to play the cello up until freshman year of high school. Uh, freshman year. Uh, sorry, freshman year of college. Uh, I was third chair cellist um, for a majority of my high school stuff. Uh, really enjoyed the. Really enjoyed playing it. Uh, somewhat miss it. Uh, yeah, that's all the instruments I used to play. I played piano like two years out of elementary school, but that was it. Uh, what's your opinion on musicals? I love musicals. I really enjoy them. Uh, my favorite musicals so far are um, Avenue Q, Spam a Lot, Wicked, which I thought was going to just downright suck. Uh, I really enjoyed. Um, what others? Uh, I've seen uh, Hairspray, which I really, uh, which I really loved. Other than that, that really, really liked it. Um, who's my favorite background pony? I don't want to give the obvious answer, but, um, uh, I'd probably go with, uh, Vinyl Scratch and Octavia, uh, as my favorite, uh, background ponies. Um, uh, I really like the idea of not only roommates, but, uh, characters having to work on their relationship. Like, you have two completely different, two complete opposites, like, um, actually one of my favorite ships is Twilight Pinkie Pie. And then you would have stuff like, um, I'm blanking out here, uh, where, twi uh, where you have both characters rub off on each other, you, where you have, like, uh, Twilight uh, would become more loose and more outgoing, and then you have Pinkie Pie would, uh, would take from Twilight uh, to be more calm and organized. Uh, and they work uh, better to have one uh, mesh relationship. So yeah, I li like Final Scratch and Octavia. Maddie Madster asks, How did you get your cutie mark? I think I'll let Screenplay take this one. Screenplay, take it away. I'm glad you asked. You see, when I was a little kid, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. That was until I saw a certain movie. Bad Colts 2. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. I saw that and I thought, Wow, I could write a better script than that. And then it occurred to me, I should write scripts. Thus, I came up with idea after idea of what I wanted to do. And when I wrote my first script, I decided, yes, I wanted to be a screenwriter. And thus, how I got my cutie mark. And now you know how Equestria was made. Wait, um, anyway, next question. Xeno Jean Grey asks, what do you think of the MLP role-playing as magic? I want to play it, but, uh, again, I don't really know any people uh, in my town that would want to play because it's an MLP thing. Um, I do play Dungeons and Dragons uh, a couple times, uh, but other than that, can't really get any people to uh, get in because everyone doesn't really watch MLP. Uh, in particular, what do you think of the power balancing between the different races? I think go the obvious question, the obvious answer: are Unicorns Master Race uh, from Mentally Advanced. But other than that, I'd probably say that the uh, power balancing between the two um, I'd probably say that even though the unicorns are probably the most powerful, uh, each one has a different ability that the unicorns of Pegasi can't do. Uh, that the that uh, the Pegasi and the Earth Ponies can do that unicorns can't. Uh, like I think Unicorn, um, Pegasi would have, like, better sta uh, better stamina, uh, in the sky, and of course the ability to fly, um, w while Earth Ponies would be better at crafting things, uh, which I think me, a NY Past and me were, uh, were talking about in one of the streams. Uh, this all leads to the real question. Please explain why anyone would choose to be an Earth Pony, like my avatar, instead of a unicorn, particularly if you knew what exactly you... Uh, sorry. Particularly if you knew you would actually be reincarnated into Equestria as your avatar. Um, I like being... The reason I chose to be an Earth... My OC to be an Earth Pony is because I like being grounded. I like my OC... I like seeing things on the ground up rather than 
uh, either having my head way too far in the clouds or being uh, being so high up that I can't that I can't see the fine, the finer things from the bottom. Um, as a as I say in my like reviews, I really like story structure. If the if the story flows naturally, then uh, then I would actually give it a bet. Uh, I'd actually give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, for example, even though I really like uh, Sleepless in Ponyville, I absolutely hate the story structure in it because of how introducing Luna disrupts the flow of the story, uh, as I mentioned in some of my reviews. Um, yeah, I like being down to earth with my stuff. So yeah, that's, all, uh, that's why I chose to be an Earth Pony. Oh god. Classic TV Guy 1 asks, When will you admit that you just don't get Friendship is Witchcraft's humor? For the more comedic answer, NEVER! For the more, uh, serious answer, I do understand the humor. It's trying to be this... I it's trying to be so bad, it's ironic type thing. And if it works for you, that's fine, but... It... It really doesn't for me. It's just... Uh, it becomes like... It's not so bad, it's good. Uh, like a lot of over-the-top... Uh, lot all the top action shows do. Like, it's so ironic... So stupidly bad that it's actually entertainingly good. In this case, Friendship is Witchcraft is so bad, it's actually dull and doesn't even get a chuckle out of me. Uh, there's no context to the jokes. The timing is downright uh, terrible. Uh, I just... Uh, if, that, if that was the intention, I, I just don't understand why they would do that type of humor. But uh, to finally put this all behind us, I will say... I will stop talking about Friendship is Witchcraft and finally put everything aside by saying just one thing. Friendship is Witchcraft is not talented or clever enough to make incest funny. And with that, I'm done with Friendship is Witchcraft. Second, any other series that everyone else loves but you hate? Uh, there's a couple of anime that I don't like but everyone else seems to hate. Um, like, I used to... Um, Dead Man Wonderland is one of them. Uh, I enjoyed it up until the middle where they revealed the, uh, who the Wretched Egg was. And it completely ruined the series. Uh, the reason for uh, the person who turned out to be the Wretched Egg uh, uh, for doing this stuff to, uh, to Ganta and his classmates makes absolutely no sense. Uh, the characters they introduced were just cannon fodder. I just... I just lost interest in the series and didn't really enjoy it. Um, other series, like, um, uh, Naruto Shippuden's another series that I didn't like, but everyone else seems to. Um, I thought it was too drawn out, it was boring, I uh, really couldn't get into it. Um, oh, Kenichi the Midas Disciples, another one. Uh, I tried watching the first three episodes. They couldn't decide on a genre. Do they want to be the over-the-top... Uh, do they want to be the over-the-top uh, shonen show, or do you want to be a light-hearted sports anime? They couldn't decide between the two. Uh, but in terms of, like, Western animation... That's a tough one. Uh, actually, no, there is one that I actually did not like, but everyone else seems to. And considering what, who created the show that I, that I review, it really bat, it's really gonna bite me in the ass. Alright, and remember, this is just my opinion. Uh, just because I say it stinks, uh, I didn't like it doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to like it. I did not like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Yeah, I didn't like it growing up. I, I don't get me wrong. There was stuff I did enjoy of it. Um, uh, I really liked the setting. I really liked the ideas that Craig McCracken had about the uh, where do all the imaginary friends go. Uh, they're in basically like a foster's home. Uh, uh, I really liked uh, the story ideas. In fact, Goodwill Hunting is actually one of my favorite episodes from that series. 
uh, even though it's an hour and a half long. Um, what else did I like from that? Uh, despite the flash animation, I thought that it worked because of flash animation, because uh, the way I see it is that a child's mind is not fully developed, so it's gonna look like a Scrabble or like this cartoon like character that you would see on a high school nap uh, on a notebook uh, in uh, in one of your class uh, one of your classes. Uh, and I thought that was actually really clever, and I really liked that idea. But the main reason why I did not like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, I hated the characters. Uh, well. Uh, I like Madame Foster. Madame Foster is awesome. Minus the Europe episode with the, uh, where she steals Max tickets. Um, I really did not like, well, I really like Frankie. Frank, uh, Frankie I can relate to. Uh, I really enjoy, uh, Eduardo is probably my favorite of the main, uh, imaginary friends. Um, uh, Mr. Harriman. Uh, oddly enough, is also a character I like, despite the fact that everyone's supposed to hate the guy. Um, uh, Wilt I was indifferent towards. Coco just went over my head. I know, I like Pinkie Pie, but Coco goes over my head. I absolutely hated Blue. Blue is probably my least favorite character of all time, and it makes me wonder why Mac created him in the first place. Uh, he's selfish, he's arrogant, he's stuck up, he thinks that everyone's beneath him, and when you have to deal with that every single, uh, you have to deal with those antics almost every single episode, it's almost a chore to sit through, and I absolutely hated him. So, yeah, that's probably the main reason why I didn't like Foster's. Um, have you seen any other modern cartoons like Archer, Bob's Burgers, Adventure Time, etc.? If so, what do you think of them? Archer I have seen a couple of episodes of. It's hit or miss in the comedy department. Um, uh, some are actually funny after the fact, if you really think about it. Uh, Bob's Burgers, uh, I actually found a show that's even duller than King of the Hill. Uh, I don't know, for some reason, I just can't get behind H. John Benjamin's style of humor. Uh, when he's like 100% deadpan, dry humor. I prefer variety in a lot of my uh, comedy stuff. As for Bench Time, really enjoy it. Uh, uh, I really like the the mythology they have behind their show. Um, as for other cartoons, Family Guy I did like, but after uh, Road to the Multiverse, everything just went downhill. Simpsons, um, oddly enough, I started like right before the movie came out, so that was I say about my taste of humor. Um, South Park, love. Absolutely love. It's only the one the modern cartoon that I actually still watch to this day. Uh, and that's really all I'll say about the modern cartoons. Uh, Fluttershy Gamer123 asks, What is your thoughts on the MLP spinoff? Uh, and what do you think will happen in the MLP movie? Um, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, which I know there's another question about that later on. Uh, and what is your favorite Adventure Time episodes? Favorite Adventure Time episodes, uh, jeez, I think the one, anything with Marceline, uh, anytime Marceline's on screen, I really enjoy her stuff, uh, the zombie episode with, um, uh, where it's up to the candy corn mouse named Science to save everybody, that's one of my favorites, um, uh, uh, the Fiona and Cake stuff is fantastic, uh, uh, I think those are probably my favorite episodes from those guys. Uh, what did, um, Averchew asks... What and where is the best restaurant you've been to? Uh, it's a, I think it's a surf and turf restaurant in Niagara Falls, Canada. And from what I remember, the service was great. Um, it was just me, me, my family, and my friend's family were there. And if I remember correctly, um, uh, what happens was the, uh, the waiter didn't have a notepad. So... Uh, so he basically had to memorize every single one of our orders uh, for, like, nine people. And he remembered every single one, right down to the placemats. And that's probably the best service I've ever seen in a restaurant. John Phillips asks, About Sonic comics, what do you think of Bunny being unroboticized, and how long have you been reading them? Uh, let's see. I've been reading com the Sonic the Hedgehog comics since 2009. 
uh, which is an odd place to start because I started off with Sonic Universe. And yeah, I probably should have started earlier, but I did manage to catch up to the Sonic the Hedgehog comics via, uh, uh, via scans I found online. And yeah, I've enjoyed it up, I've enjoyed it so far. Uh, with, of course, its usual bumps on the way, Sonic Live, Sonic Image Crossover, Sonic the Hedgehog number 134, House of Cards, um, uh, what recently, uh, Chaos, uh, Chaos in the Crown, um, yeah, and I've been, yeah, pretty much been reading them since 2009, same thing with the Mega Man comics, um, started in 2000, well, 2011 I started reading. Um, and my thoughts on Bunny being unroboticized. Uh, I think the same thing I go with uh, Alcorn Twilight. Even though I'm sort of against it because Bunny kicked ass as a robot, there are a lot of there's a lot of potential to do while she's not while she doesn't have her mechanical parts. And I don't see the mechanical parts not being there as permanent. I see it being a temporary thing because uh, if you saw in some if you read in some of the comics. Um, Ixus Nagus's magic was sort of waning because of the black light, the, um, the reset button event. Both reset button events. Oh God, how is that going to happen? Uh, but, yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, I think there's a lot of potential with that. I still think she's going to be out there, out there in the field, kicking ass. Uh, I can see Rotor giving her own Mega Buster. However, if I think I know, if they're going the way I think they're going to go with at the end of Sonic Universe number 15, uh, 49, uh, uh, then I may look at Bunny in a different light. Mr. Bro uh, Mr. Bronyflux asks, Wow, you like Lindsay Sterling, cool! Uh, I do, I recently, uh, well, I found out from Radio Dead Air, uh, for those who don't know, it's a, uh, it's an online radio broadcast stuff where, uh, they play, like, all these old music, um, like, uh, like deep deep cuts called the Invisibles. Then there's a segment called What the Fuck is Wrong with You. And if you know what I'm talking about, it's uh, Nash from the That Guy with the Glasses who does it. And I absolutely, I love it. I used to participate in the uh, the chat with everyone. Uh, same thing under Voice of Reason or Penmo Twenty Four as my uh, uh, my YouTube uh, name. And yeah, I really, really love Lizzie Sterling. Uh, if you want, if you guys want to see what I'm talking about, look up the Lindsey Sterling Shadows. Probably, it's my favorite, it's one of my favorite music videos of all time. Um, actual question. What do you think of Derpy? Especially, do you think she's offensive? Um, I don't think she's offensive. I think she's just, uh, I think she's just klutzy. And, uh, though if you do read, if you have watched the... Or actually listen to Doctor Who's an assistant, you know that her klutzy nature has actually saved the day a couple of times. So, so yeah, her greatest uh, greatest flaw is actually her greatest strength. So go figure with that one. <laughs>